it's Kelly from Under a Texas Sky, and today I am actually coming to you from Deering's General Store um, right here in Hubbard, Texas, which is a tiny little map dot of a town in Central Texas. And um, I am wanting to show you this really cool technique uh, using Dixie Bell paint and crackle glaze. I know that um, it seemed like, I don't know, several years ago, everybody was all about crackle. And um, it's kind of, you know, I don't know if you wanna say falling out of favor, but people just don't seem to use it very much um, anymore. And I just wanted to show you how cool a project can look using the crackle glaze uh, that you can get. Um, you can buy it here at Deering's General Store. You can buy it at underatexasky.com. Um, you can order it from me if you don't live close to Central Texas, close to Waco. Um, you can order it from me online. If you'll go to undertexasky.com and uh, just clip on sh click on Shop Dixie Bell, you can order it there. But anyway, so what I started with on this project, and I'm just doing this plaque, this little plaque. Um, it's just a wood plaque. Um, it's got a nice routed edge. And I've already painted it in Dixie Bell coffee bean. Um, this is a really, really popular color. It's a great base color. And remember when you're doing crackle, the base color of your piece is the color you want the cracks to be. So once you get your top coat on, when it crackles and cracks, you're gonna see the base color coming through. So just know that whatever color you want your cracks to be, that's the color you paint your base color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. I'm going to give it a stir. Um, I'm using a um, one of the sticks that come in transfers because I also sell um, redesign transfers. And uh, you can get those again here at the store. You can get them um, online at undertexasky.com and uh, click on Shop Dixie Bell Products because the, um, the transfers are in that on my Shopify page also. Um, I'm just wiping this down. And then I'm gonna move y'all down. You're gonna bear with me just a second. I'm gonna move the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna do just light coats. Um, I'm not, um, I don't want there to be big globs. I don't want there to be huge, you know, areas of crackle. Um, I just want it to be, you know, a nice thin coat. And the thing, and there's some things drip, dropped in here. Um, the thing that you need to real, remember too is um, thin coats and never pull your brush back through. Um, when you start the paint process, and I'm just using a little chip brush. This happens to be a Dixie Belle chip brush, but you can get chip brushes anywhere. Um, Harbor Freight is a great place to go for, for chip brushes. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint this on and be sure that your paint is dry. Your base coat needs to be dry. before you put this on, so be sure that it's dry completely. And I'm putting it on the edges and everything. And I'm just dragging it all in the same direction, trying to keep it even and smooth. All the way through. And this doesn't take long. And it's hard to resist that urge to go back the other direction with your brush. You know, that's something that you just, you know, you feel like you want to do, but don't do it because you don't want to mess up your crackling. Continue with your, just brushing it on. And like I said, I'm not trying to be really thick or heavy handed with it at all. Just 
just making sure I'm getting all of the places because there are some grooves on the sides of this piece. I'm getting all kinds of stuff in there. I've been doing some signs using my um, silhouette. So I've got some little sign pieces laying around from where I weeded it. Okay, so I think that I've got this good. And be sure that you've got, you know, every piece of your finish is done. You know, where you've got some crackle medium everywhere. And it doesn't have to be exactly even because you're going to, um, you know, your, your aged look is going to have different widths of glaze. Okay, so I've got that. I'm gonna dry. This needs to be completely dry. So I'm gonna take my gun, my heat gun. I'll go ahead and dry this. Okay, then once it's dry, it's still going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, and you know, this is not a super smooth finish. It doesn't look like a coat of paint on there or anything like that. Um, so don't, you know, don't panic or anything if it doesn't, if you don't think it looks exactly right. And then over top of this, I'm going to use um, some dusty blue. This is one of our new colors. Blue and it is beautiful, and I love blues and browns together. Don't mind the sounds of the great big 18 wheelers barreling down our downtown streets here. Oh, come on, um, okay. I'm going to give this a good shake. And mix that paint up. A lot of people say you should stir your paint. I'm just going to shake it in this case. Do it ever how you think works best for you. Let's see. There we go. Then when I start painting this on, you're going to start noticing the crackling effect pretty quickly. Get this stamp. I don't have my Mr. Bottle here. Um, so I'm going to use, I'm going to barely get this brush a little bit damp before I dip in my paint. Normally I would just use my Mr. Bottle and give it a spray and dampen the bristles just a little bit. And these are way too wet, as you can imagine. I'm just gonna paper towel them off a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna give my paint one more shake. And I'm just gonna dip right into the lid.
And always the paint, of course, it's Dixie Belle paint, so it's amazing coverage. Just glides on so nicely. And you don't have to go thick with it. Hope y'all are having a great day. I don't know. It's it's no the middle of November now, and I'm curious as to how many people have already decorated for Christmas. Seems like it just gets earlier and earlier, and it's okay. You know, I know a lot of people just really rag on people for decorating early, and uh, of course, I say whatever makes you happy is exactly what you should do if you're a decorate early type person that's awesome if you wait until the day after thanksgiving that's awesome too that's what we usually do um i honestly don't know what i'm gonna do this year if i'm gonna go a little bit earlier of course in the store i've already got my store windows decorated and they are so gorgeous. I'm super happy with how they look. And um, it makes me, it just, I don't know. Christmas is my favorite holiday and it's, it's easy to get really nostalgic at Christmas. And uh, just remember all the good times. I remember when my children were small and um, how much fun we always used to have at Christmas time and now I've got my grandkids and that is equally fun um, they're there it's such a joy to to watch them and still get that feeling of you know wonder that you get that from watching children because children still get it children still understand the magic of Christmas and um, they're, they're just really all about that, and I think that's, that's really special. Okay. Now you can see it's starting, the crackle process is starting to happen. The, um, the paint is starting to crack. As it dries, it will just crackle up and give a nice aged look which is exactly what you want. Let me get my gun and see if I can speed it up a little bit. Okay. So now, you can see how you've got this nice crackly finish. And that's dry. Now, if I wanted to, um, or if you want to, you could go over this again with, let's see, what have I got here? I've got, I've got some brown wax. Let's just see. I'm gonna see what happens with some brown wax. I'm gonna do this side first, just in case it's horrible and doesn't really give us what we're looking for. Oh yeah some nice age see that and that added just a layer of age to this that I like especially on this these grooves on the side you know you think about um, where age happens on any piece of furniture, it's gonna happen in these cracks, you know, that you have on the sides, these routed edges. And I'm just using Dixie Belle Be De Best Dang Wax in um, brown. I thought since the coffee bean is on the underside, brown would be good to kind of complement that. 
and I'm just using a paper towel to apply it. Um, you know, you can use a brush, you can use a micro microfiber cloth, which is what I usually use, but I just don't have them here at the store. That I would want to use. And you can see how this is just adding another layer of depth, which is cool. Corners. You can wear gloves when you do this if you want to, if you don't want your hands to look like this. But that's okay. Okay. this and it's darker on these edges and if you want to go ahead and bring that wax on to your main piece you can absolutely do that too you know it depends on how how heavy handed you want to be with it Of course, you can just keep rubbing and lightening it up. I'm going to get a little dab of water here. I got that a little bit dark, so I wet my, um, my paper towel a little bit so I could kind of take some more off. But you can see really neat that looks and that nice aged patina that you just added with wax and just keep wiping and you've got a really nice background for just about anything that you would want to do you could at this point you could take um, like a transfer and put a transfer on. But what I'm going to show you is, um, actually, you know, what am I going to do? Do I want to put, um, I use, um, and Dixie Bell carries these awesome molds from Redesign. Um, and I've got several different styles of molds, flowers and leaves, um, some more flowers. I have Etruscan Rose is another one. Um, Leafy Blossoms is one. Um, and these are silicone molds. Uh, they're great. And I use this amazing casting resin. This is what I use when I do my, um, my molds. And I've got tons of them. Um, and these, it's just a two-part process for that. It's equal parts, this yellowish one and this clear one. You mix it in another container and then just pour it in the molds and it takes about 10 minutes and they come out beautifully. Um, I've got a big one here. I thought maybe, you know, you could just take something like this put it on your piece, and then you would have something that's really pretty um, to hang or, you know, put on a, um, in a plate stand or whatever. Um, that would be really neat. And you just glue these on. Um, if you're putting it, you can use them on furniture. If you're using them on furniture, um, I would use the E6000 to attach it or attach them. Just going to use hot glue for our purposes today. Um, I just wanted, because really I'm just giving a little example of how of how it works. And let's see. Let's 
Okay. And like I said, you could put anything on this that you want to as far as a transfer. You could do a um, some vinyl. You could do a rub-on with vinyl. You could do a stencil, you know, a small stencil. You could do, um, I'm thinking, just for purposes of this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that. Um, let's see. And you just have to play with it, you know, you've just placed them, you know, and just play with it a little bit until you get something that you think works. I always have a hard time with this. I um, always just feel like, you know, I don't really, I'm not good at um, floral arranging, and I always feel like this is like floral arranging. You know, you're trying to get... Um, these flowers on here or whatever it is just so in an arrangement on your piece and I'm actually literally just using hot glue on this um, for this piece um, it's not necessary my, necessarily my recommendation in real life but it's what I've got in the store today so that's what I'm doing Okay, get these strings off of here. So I don't want that catching my paint because I am going to paint these. And I'm not going for super realistic when I paint it. I'm just going to um, paint it the same color as the board, as though it's just kind of an extension of that board. And you don't want your glue spilling out. Like I, I do have a spot of glue down here. So we're gonna just see how that turns out. Then I was gonna show you how easily these molds paint up. Ah, oh, crimey. Well, you know what? We're gonna put that one right there. I had not intended to, but it dropped. And I got a big glob of glue up there. So that stinks, but that's what we're doing. And I guess I will see if I can find some leaves to go with that. Boy, and that's on there. I can't pull that off either to try to do anything different with it. So, okay. So basically, here's what I've got. Um, let me back up so you can see. So, I'm just going to take, I've got a smaller artist brush here somewhere. take this one I've got one that's a little bit bigger than this and I'm gonna go ahead and come back into my dusty blue and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that paint make sure y'all can see what I'm doing here I'm just applying the paint to this flower because I'm not going necessarily for realistic here. I'm just going for, you know, just for the sake of kind of, you know, art. So 
So the whole thing is going to be painted in this color. And I'm trying to get all these side edges too without getting too much of it on the board that I painted. So I don't want it to stand out, but I will go around that. Um, you know, I'll add probably some wax with a brush around it so you can get the, you know, so it'll give it more depth. I'm painting the, the leaf and everything blue. And we're going to add some gilding wax to this to give it even more, you know, shine and depth and give it, you know, kind of a patina where you don't know you're looking at it. Is that some sort of a metal? Is it a, you know, is it some sort of a ceramic um, where you can't really tell what this flower is made of, you won't know that it's, you know, it's a resin flower that's been added. Come up here to this chrysanthemum up here. And I'm just slapping that paint on. And I'm not being super careful or anything. I'm just trying to get it on here without getting too much of it on the board. Because this isn't going to be the only color that we put on here, remember. Or not, the, at least not the only finish that we put on here. got some copper bronze glaze oh, come on there we go sometimes these lids get tightened on there pretty well and this is super cool looking Let me rinse this brush out a little bit. What I'm doing you should never do, don't contaminate your product by putting a dirty brush into another color. Let's see, I'm just throwing this glaze on here. Just got this nice little shimmer. Let's see how pretty that is. And I could take some of that wax as soon as I can get this lid back on straight, which I clearly can't. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'll take some of this gilding wax. And this is black. 
gilding wax. So I want to go around the flower. And I literally could take the, um, the brown wax and do the same thing. If I could get this off, there we go. Okay, let's see. How do I want to put this on? the same brush because this is a tight area let's see and see I just went into this gilding wax and I'm gonna pull around giving me kind of a shadow effect. And this is really, this is literally wax, but it's just a wax that general, that basically has a more of a sheen to it. Um, the gold, um, and copper really has a cool sheen to it. You know, see here, I'm just going around this and this is really just giving us some depth. Actually, I'm gonna go onto it a little bit too. Usually your paint is dry and you're not doing this with your paint wet, but okay. I'm going around this leaf over here too. I'm going on the leaf itself. see what so far how it looks I mean that's super cool and I'm going to dry this a little bit about these resin molds that we've made um, if I wanted to put that like bend it around a corner you all you have to do is just warm that up like I could take that heat gun put it on that um, you know on the mold itself heat it up and then actually bend it to where I wanted it to be and uh, it would absolutely take okay and then warm gold I'm gonna go with this I mean, seriously, don't you always need a little warm gold? And I'm just getting into this. And this wax is not nearly as wet as the best dang wax. It's a little bit of a drier wax. But I'm just adding some gold to, you know, as I just kind of lightly go over this, it's hitting the raised edges. And it's, it's really, you know, just doing all the work for me. And same thing down here on this leaf. Okay, so I just continued on with that gilding wax. So you can see, I mean, this is a really, pretty little plaque and it's ready for 
like I said now, because I'm, you know, mistakenly dropped this one and had to have two of them on there and left, you know, don't have all this open space. But, you know, you can come up, I could come up with something to put, you know, right here. Um, you know, whether, like I said, it be a, uh, some words from a transfer or from, um, you know, a die cut that you cut out um, or a stencil or something like that. You can make something that would be really, really nice. But that's, I mean, that's how easy this is. You get this really cool looking plaque and uh, you have it look aged and sort of metallic and it's just beautiful. And really your imagination is the only thing that's holding you back. Um, you know, get online, go to underatexasky.com and look on my um, shopping page. And you can shop for these molds, look and see. All, I mean, there's some beautiful decorative molds that are just out of this world. Imagine these on a piece of furniture, on a drawer, you know, um, just, you know, in, in addition to a transfer or in place of a transfer, um, there's all sorts of stuff that you can do. And the thing I love about the molds is they are reusable. You can use them over and over and over again. And um, that's, that's really one of the best things about the molds is that they are very versatile and that you can use them over and over again. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I know this wasn't a riveting tutorial or anything like that, but um, I think it's good information and I think you'd have fun uh, doing this project. You could do this with your kids. You could do it in Christmas colors. Just imagine that, you know, you could put an ornament on here um, or um, something like that, something, you know, ribbon or, or anything you could think of, you could put on here. Um, use your crackle paint. Remember my base coat on this one was coffee bean. And then I put on the crackle medium, let it dry, base coat, let it dry, crackle medium, let it dry. Then I top coated this in dusty blue. And then I glued on these um, molds painted them in the dusty blue. Then I put some um, copper uh, glaze on it. And then on top of that, I put, oh, actually I forgot about the brown wax. I put brown wax over everything. Then on top of these, I painted them with the blue, put the copper uh, glaze, and then I went over it with warm gold um, gilding wax. And it made this really pretty little plaque, so. Give it a try. I appreciate you guys. I love you. Blessings.